Once upon a midnight dreary, as I pondered weak and weary, scrolling through some clickbait-headed, lie-filled, judgy internet page, suddenly I heard a crying, lots of expletives and quite a bit of sighing, and realised it was entitled People Unleashing Some More Movie-Based Rage. Yes, it has been uh, a bit of a week for those who are finally seeing a new version of The Crow come out. Um, I get it. Those photos aren't necessarily the best. I did enjoy the uh, mockery of the tattoo around the nipple of the uh, Skarsgård that is in the, the main role. Is it? I think it's Bill Skarsgård. I get the Skarsgårds mixed up. But you know what? The, the Crow is a property that's been worked and reworked numerous times over the past few decades. Uh, I I join the people who love the the Brandon Lee film. Uh, I think it's great. I think it's got a, an amazing aesthetic. I think Brandon Lee was delivering a star making turn. I know it's difficult to separate his performance from what happened on that set. Uh, but there have been what three other films in that series now? Three, is it? I can't remember the subheadings. I'm pretty sure one of them was played by Edward Furlong. I can't recall though. If anyone could recall, that would be Tyler. Um, so, I mean, it's not exactly a precious IP. This could be good. The, the remake, reworking, reboot of The Crow has been in development for a long, long time. And the last person who should be commenting on what some unreleased film looks like before they've seen the film, is Alex Proyas. Sorry, like, I love some of his work. Love The Crow. Love, I'm pretty sure Proyas did Dark City. I think he also did Knowing that I really like. But, um, you know, he doesn't have a good, more recent track record. And he has a, a proven history of spitting his dummy. And just taking umbrage with people who are critical of his work. So let's just leave that to the side. And he's entitled to his opinion, but sharing it with the world and trying to just make some quick jibe at something he maybe feels precious about is, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's not worth the paper it isn't printed on. So um, in other news this week, I was going to do an art section of the cinema room. I was debating that. I was going to discuss the films we're covering on the podcast this week. I've yet to watch Tyler's Choice to Catch a Killer from 2023, I believe, with uh, Shailene Woodley and Ben Mendelsohn in there. Um, I've not watched it yet, though. I was going to discuss Craig's Choice, uh, Phase 4, directed by Saul Bass, uh, a fantastic sci-fi slash horror slash ant movie that, um, spoiler, is uh, an absolute all-time fave of mine. So, um don't think Tyler's getting the sweet this week. But then I remembered it is coming up to, uh, I think it's Oscar weekend. So um, by, does it happen on Sunday night? It's different to keep track with the time difference here. It's usually Sunday night. I used to stay up all night to watch the Oscars and book the, the Monday off work. Um, I've seen all of the best picture Oscar contenders. And I believe I've seen most of the uh most of the the nominees in various categories so uh, i thought i would give you my overall opinion on them for what it's worth i think it's been a good year for uh movies in the best picture category i you know i think it's uh i think barbie being in there is a nod to you know, the popularity of it and a, a sort of cursory slash courtesy nomination. I don't think it's in with a chance for Best Picture because of how it's presented. Not any comment on the film itself, uh, just because of how it's presented. And, you know, hopefully it will pick up something elsewhere. But, you know, that that's not what the Academy goes for. So... Potentially Oppenheimer, I guess, is the is the big favourite. Uh, poor things might sneak in there. And 
Well, I mean, it would be great to see the holdovers win and Paul Giamatti win. But I think Oppenheimer has it locked. I think uh, Killian Murphy's lead performance there is exceptional. Like, I, I really do think it's absolutely deserving of all the praise he's had. Um, which is a shame because I do think the holdovers is uh, quite possibly Paul Giamatti's best role in certainly since sideways um but but maybe his best ever and it's kind of a role that seemed to have had him in mind and then he sunk his teeth into it and it's just a perfect pairing like it's wonderful the holdovers is great i'm annoyed it got held back here until after the new year when it has the uh you know the the trimmings and and feel of a christmas movie it surprised the biggest laugh out of me uh in the cinema uh, this this year already so that was good but it's it's great but oppenheimer seems to be the uh the the steamroller uh murphy uh, robert downey jr will probably keep going with the uh best supporting actor awards in terms of uh best supporting actress i do think the um I forget her name, sorry, there's the lady in the holdovers who's been winning a number of awards. I won't say Div Divine Randall for Divine Joy. Um, I don't have details in front of me, so I am going by my faulty memory. So you'll have to excuse me. Uh, I think she's, she's great, and if she gets that award, then that's wonderful too. And I, I don't know, best actress... People seem to be thinking Emma Stone will get it. I would like Gladstone to get it. Um, as much as I like Emma Stone, and I really do, I think many of the other performances are actually... I don't want to say better, but I think... Like, I think Emma Stone gives a great performance. I think she plays a great character. I think... It's it's a bit of a of a slightly easier showier performance in terms of you know there's uh the, there's strangeness to it there's rudeness to it there's a bit of nudity so people are like oh it's such a brave performance and maybe it is maybe it isn't but it's different to the performances delivered by Sandra Huller, delivered by, um, uh, who did I just hit Lily Gladstone? <laughs> um, uh, delivered elsewhere. The only person that I am, I'm not a fan of overall um, is, like, I didn't rate uh, Carrie Mulligan's performance in Maestro. I really like Carrie Mulligan, but I didn't really rate Maestro at all. That would be bottom of the heap for me. For all of the um, awards contenders, I just I just wasn't a fan. Everything else is is good to great, um, and and like it's a really good haul. If you are wanting to check them out, I encourage you to do so. American Fiction is a lot of fun, and I think it's I think it's a bit lighter in some ways than a number of the other movies. And that it quite rightly asks a number of questions, but doesn't ever uh, sort of offer any answers. And that is, uh, you know, kind of ultimately the point that there are no easy answers to the questions it poses. But uh, Jeffrey Wright is another person who I think in, in another year, I think, with a slightly weaker field would be a, a lot because I think that was a great lead role for him. Um and I'm forgetting someone that I meant to mention. Oh, Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo is, is a great uh, supporting turn in Poor Things. And uh, I know that uh, Mark Marin really rates his performance and had him on his podcast a, a week or so ago and interviewed him and was full of praise. And I, I think it's great. So anyway, wh whatever you do, you know, I know a lot of people say the Oscars are pointless, award ceremonies are pointless, don't bother. Um, it, it can be fun for film fans to, you know, see what's happening, uh, have a list of films to, to check out that should be worth your time. And then you can always make time 
elsewhere in the schedule for stuff like, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem and um, uh, Night Swim. Don't make time for a Night Swim. Uh, but all the other more populist entertainment that isn't recognised by the Academy. Uh, so, yeah, and it is still shameful that they do not have any awards uh, recognising the stunt work and the stunt teams. Absolutely shameful. So in all of their attempts to uh, maintain relevance and popularity and widen the, the scope that they view the movies through, they're, they're just leaving the, the stunt team and workers hung out to dry. It's, it's embarrassing at this point and awful. So I think that's enough for me. That's about 10 minutes. I've been lazy this week. I've not even put the, the phone on the, the hook. I've just been uh, lazy about on my bed to give you this absolutely lazy Oscar report. That'll do it. Eh? See you next week.